welcome to the Creative Arts Apothecary. I'm your host, Marina Zellner, and I am so happy to introduce my guest, Larissa Russell. Larissa, the founder of Creative You Healing, is an international best-selling author, speaker, artist, coach, and healer. Her belief is that you can draw, write, create, meditate, and work through your spiritual being to heal yourself. Larissa and Creative You Healing are helping thousands of women do just that. She is also the host of the Creative Soul Healing Podcast, where she has amazing conversations with creatives and healers and those who have used creativity in their healing. Larissa is blessed to work with women who are ready to make changes in their lives. As a master of change, which she has developed through her life adventures, Larissa has a unique perspective that helps women learn and feel comfortable with their boundaries, as well as find what they really want from their lives. Larissa, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to meet with you always. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Can, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, the your kind of work that you do, um, more, more specifically, like how, how you work with people? Mm-hmm. Your background? Yeah. Oh, well, background. So um, basically, my background is I've been a creative my whole life, also a seeker of spirituality, healing modalities. So I've uh, taken training in, in many different things, experienced many different things. And, you know, 30 plus years of doing that, uh, but still suffering from severe depression. And a few years, I keep saying a few years, but we're getting closer to 10 years ago now. I had a very bad bout of depression that almost took my life. And with that, I realized that the system was not going to be there for me. And so I needed to do something differently. And I started creating. I started journaling first. I started painting. And it was all very intentional. Like I knew that I needed to do the work to be able to dig myself out of this. I was also taking the medication and doing the therapy and all of those things. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I needed to do the creating that my soul was calling for. And so I, I did that and started to see a difference. And as I started to see a difference, I uh, thought I need, to, I need to share this. There's so many women, especially, that are suffering from depression and anxiety, those things that I had been suffering from that needed this as well. And so I started with creativity first, like let's just be creative and then added the healing aspect of it. And then more recently, I've added that extra layer of spirituality to it. And that was a return to spirituality for me because I had, like I said, studied so many different um, religions and belief systems for years. And, uh, but I had moved away through some things that had happened in my life. I had a partner die and then I had a, a very scary um journey experience that I did we were doing some psychopomp work which is where, where you where a group go in to help like in a natural disaster area in the spirit world to help people cross over and we all had very um, horrific experiences this one time and I lost one of my guides in that experience and the spirit world when you've worked in the spirit world for a long time is very real to you right and so it was devastating to me and I just lost my partner and that there was just so many things. And I stepped completely away from my spirituality for a number of years. And then uh, almost two years ago now, one of my best friends died and she was a shamanic practitioner. And she kept coming to me after she died and said, like, you have to go back because I can't keep doing this for you. And at first I was kind of angry, like, what do you mean you can't keep doing it for me? What are you doing for me, right? But she had been sort of carrying my lack of looking after myself, but she was now gone. And so she couldn't keep doing that for me. Um, and so I needed to step in and have those conversations myself and, and talk to spirit myself again. And so that was sort of the start my journey back. And, and, you know, like riding a bike, you, you remember these things and you get back into it fairly quickly. So I started to bring the spiritual work back into um, my life, but then also into my business. And that has been such a blessing 
because everything has shifted for me in my business, but also in how I help people. And so some of the work that we do at Creative You, meditation and journaling are a huge part of it, but also really tapping into our own selves and the energy, especially the feminine divine energy, because that's such an important part that's missing, <laughs> missing in our society, in our culture. We are so driven by the patriarchy and we keep trying to fit into a mold that we don't fit into. And so really tapping back into that feminine divine so that we can find the balance for our own selves. So long convoluted, but th that's kind of where I am now. <laughs> Answer your question. Beautiful. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it feels good. I like the. Um chills because I feel like so connected at so many parts we have so much overlap um that um and 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 I appreciate how you you keep it um like neutral just to say that like there's no shame or blame for like you're from this faith you're from that faith instead you like really make it available it's like like you're connecting to your truest self like, mm -hmm. what what surprised you the most in, in working in this field I think um because I've been a lifelong seeker, right, myself, I'm always trying to uh, dig in. And of course, you learn more as you go. I think one of the biggest things that has surprised me is how shallow, and I don't mean shallow as in vain and, and, but shallow, like people are afraid to dig in, right? And so you, you have to like do these. And I think that's why I keep the creativity as such an important part of it, because creativity allows us to gently get in there. Like, I just want to like tear everything apart, but I have to remember that people are afraid of, of change and afraid of what's happening and afraid of things being different. That's the, uh, probably the biggest thing, because as you change, the world around you changes. And so things are going to change for you. Relationships are going to change and your expectations are going to change. Like there's so many things that change. And so that fear, which I guess I should have understood, has been a huge surprise for me. It's like, come on, let's dig in. Okay, no, uh, let's go slower. Yep, that's just one little baby step at a time, which I can do. I can do. I can do my own work separately from helping other people. But yes, I had to learn to pull back quite a bit because I just wanted to jump in with both feet. Let's fix it all now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was probably my biggest surprise. Yeah. That's so interesting. Totally. Yeah. I mean, well, you're, you're fluent. You, you immersed, you went full immersion and, and you, you learned it in, intuitively inside and out and, and research all of it. So you, you live <laughs> and breathe it. And it's, it's like, like the, like the body when, when we're super flexible, we can't just like go into the splits. I mean, some of us can't, but like you could be I cannot, but yes. really to like, ease into it. And, I ease into and it. it's just like, you know, art as a, as someone who is excellent at, you know, watercolors or acrylics or whatever it is, you don't just like give people paint and go, okay, do it. No, like let's ease into it. But I, I just, I guess in my excitement, of it because I've been teaching one aspect or another my whole life um, but as you get into the heavier things which I tend to do more of now you have to go much slower much slower and so it's not a you know I have people who have been working with me for a few years and and I can definitely see the changes mm. they can see the changes it's amazing but yeah it does take time does take time. oh cool so cool and i love i love the depths of it all because it's just it embraces i mean we're we're whole beings and um yeah all of it spiritual emotional intellectual um mm -hmm. what are you working on these days that's really lighting you up you mentioned the divine feminine that is it that is it for sure like everything has the energy of the divine uh feminine right now because it's just you know it's really interesting how it came to me it, I call them downloads and they often happen in the middle of the night, unfortunately for me, but I think that's the only time I stop long enough for <laughs> spirit to go, wait a second, you need to know this, you know, unless I'm asking a question, they, they don't interject with the things they think I need to know. They just answer the questions. So middle of the night, I get this download as I call them 
And I, I like, I'm writing an email to myself with all this information that's coming to me, right? And, you know, the next morning, I'm like putting a program together based on all this information that I had. And within the week, I would say at least I saw six other people put out almost identical wording programs, right? And we're all different in how we're going to present it. But you know that this is like the divine spirit talking to you because everybody is getting this information. Everybody who is willing and capable of sharing is getting this information because it's so important. And so from that, uh, our awakening program, which is closed right now, but we will be reopening it, um, is all about exploring that feminine energy and finding the balance. And then really it's moved into all of our programs, quite honestly, but in, in awakening, we are delving deep into it. Yeah. So that's what lights me up right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So good. So juicy. So timely. Um, and you, you have, you have a, a free, a free gift for the audience. Yes. Yes, I do. So it's our intuitive journaling. Uh, there's a meditation and intuit and, and intuitive journaling exercise for you to do. Um, it's about uh, just learning to tap in and listen to your higher power, the divine spirit, whatever you, God, whatever you want to call it, um, and learning to listen to that. So it's a journaling and meditation for you. So special. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I love it. Um, I love it. And and also very special is that you have prepared for us a demo. So right now we'll 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 trans into transition into your studio. Would you like to mm-hmm. introduce it a little bit and uh, say a few words? Yes, to- absolutely. So I'm going to share with you just a, a just an intuitive painting exercise because I think it's really important to sort of let color and symbol and all of those things just show up on your page. Um, about tapping into that balance of the feminine energy. And so, first of all, listening to what's missing, and then also sort of what are the messages you need and what is it trying to tell you and how can you move towards it? So, yeah, we're going to move some color around just uh, and have fun with it, really. Oh, so it's about having fun. I'll say that again. No, it's always about having fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So right now there's the, the video portion and then there's also uh, something separate that's downloadable um, to this subject. And thank you. Thank you for, for, for advocating this field, for putting it out there, for, for the work that you do. It's, it's um, always insightful, uplifting and fun. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, same here. All right, let's jump in. Thank you, Marina. I'm excited to do this with you. Digging into... And I don't even know if digging in is the right word, but any time that we start to explore, I just get so excited. And as I said to Marina, I'm just like, let's go faster. Let's go faster. I totally understand because I've had my own two steps forward, one step back, you know, three steps forward, five steps back um, life. So I get it. And, you know, as excited as I am to help people, because I know these things work. I also know we all have to move at our own pace. So this is just a really nice, simple exercise to sort of allow us to tap a little bit into our feminine energy, but also then ask those questions of what, what do we need? What, what more, right? Because we want to find the balance. So we want to first like just tap into our own feminine energy and it doesn't have to be the same as anyone else's. We often think it looks one way or There's so many things in life that we think, oh, if we do it this way or if we do it that way. And we've been taught that. And it doesn't, there is no one size fits all for anything. So we offer, you know, we have a collective of amazing presenters and healers and creatives and all of the things. Uh, I host summits. This is Marina's. Because we come together as a collective to share what works for us in hopes that you find something that works for you. And it could be a little bit of this. It could be a little bit of that. And maybe 
maybe it's part of one thing and part of another thing and you blend it together yourself. I do a lot of that. I see something and I'm like, yeah, but it's not quite it for me. So what can I do to make it mine? And so as a, as a energy, we are one. And so don't be afraid to borrow what works for you because It's a collective energy that we all get to tap into. So just putting that out there. So I just want us to sort of settle into our feminine energy. So I'm just going to invite you to um, close your eyes for a moment and just hand on heart, right? And just start to feel into what, what is your feminine energy? What does that mean for you? And take a deep breath in. And slowly release. What is that feminine energy within you? And it may be buried deep. Our culture doesn't really allow for it. really feel in and maybe you'll just start to feel a little bit of a spark in there yeah I just want you to come to your page maybe you need to write things or move color whatever it is for you do that and don't think oh I'm using the wrong color or it's supposed to be this think about the the finished product what is coming to you from your internal feminine energy that you need. Let's let's dig in and see. So I'm just tapping into my own internal feminine energy. And and from moment to moment, day to day, every time I do an exercise like this, it it, it can change. Not, it doesn't change drastic. Well, sometimes it does. It depends on, on where I'm at. Um, I find a lot of times the colors are similar. They're the ones that sort of feed me. Um, I've always been uncomfortable with pink in my life. Um, I think because we are forced as women or girls to love pink because that's a girl color. And I was never comfortable with that. Um, I've always been considered quite rebellious. Don't tell me what to do. Um, but I've, I've found myself embracing the pink a little more lately and trying to work within, in it because it makes me uncomfortable. I mean, I didn't choose pink purposely here. Uh, it shows up here for me. It may not show up for you, but I have been trying to work with pink because it makes me uncomfortable. And so um, if I tap into my feminine, um, typically I find there's a very similar color color scheme for me. Um, and it could be completely different for you. And I just I really like watercolors because they allow things to flow, but if you have markers or Uh, pencil crayons or even just a pen just allow yourself to make marks on the page what does the feminine in you what is that just continue with that allowing yourself to feel into the feminine feel into that feminine energy and this has nothing to do with men and women We all need a balance. And unfortunately, our patriarchal world is unbalanced. And our our men are suffering as much as we are. They're just suffering differently. So my focus is on women. That's who I work with. I speak to the she, her, typically.
but everyone, everyone ultimately needs balance. It's just what does that look like? So you're not, you're not copying my picture, right? You're feeling into the feminine within. Because when we feel into that feminine, we can start to see where we may be lacking. And our masculine energy that we live in, this patriarchal world where we have to do, produce, we, you know, we're wasting time if we're not making money. All of the things that we, and, and, and it's this go, 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 uh, often, you know, 24 hour cycle, uh, which is a very masculine energy. Women typically move in a 28-day cycle, so it might shift slightly for you, Um, but we've been forced into this 24-hour cycle, um, which is causing us depression, anxiety, and just an immense amount of overwhelm because we're not giving ourselves space to stop, to look after ourselves. Even creativity We have, but we have the guilt because we're not producing. We're not good enough to be selling. Or maybe we are, but we're not not selling. Or maybe we are selling, but we're not selling enough. But creativity is a feminine energy. And so creating just for the sake of creating is really important for our well-being. Self-care, which we talk about a lot in our culture, at least we do now more than we used to. However, self-care looks a lot like, you know, maybe a spa day, um, but not until everyone else is looked after, right? So everyone else gets looked after and then, oh, if you have the time and money, you know, Take yourself to the spa. Go get your nails done. But what do we actually need individually? Like, what do you need for self-care? What does that look like for you? Spa day is not um, self-care for me. Uh, I've done them. You know, I love a good massage. I'm all in. However, self-care for me is rest. Reminding myself that I don't have to go, go, go all the time. It's a tough one for me because I've spent most of my life in the go mode. And so I, I still struggle with it. It's creating for the sake of creating. That's self care for me. So I don't turn a camera on, I don't um, share with others. I just create because I need to create. Sometimes it's trying something new, and maybe I'll share that later. Sometimes it's just painting circles. Doesn't matter. It's whatever I need in the moment. So as I'm tapping into my feminine energy, what messages am I getting? What's coming up for me? We should all be asking that of ourselves. What message? What do I need? What do I need to know right now? Spirit trying to tell me. Just allow the marks to show up on the page however they need to. And maybe there's a message in the marks and maybe there's not. Maybe the message is in making the marks. Just letting go, allowing the color to show up as it needs to, allowing the the marks to show up as they need to. We don't need to direct everything. We've been taught we do. We need to be in control. We need to we need to be in control, but we also We shouldn't rely on our own selves because everyone else is smarter, better, 
or experienced than we are. We've been taught not to trust ourselves, not to trust our intuition. And what would it look like if we did trust it? It'd probably look a lot like this. And you can start to get those messages that you need. I'm just sort of hovering my brush over my paint because I'm like, it's not up to me to decide. If I'm tapping in, what, what is it? So I'm just allowing the color that needs to be there. And then we often think, well, how do I know I'm not just telling myself? And you are. You are telling yourself. You're telling yourself what you need. That's what tapping in is. That's tapping into your feminine energy, your intuition, your higher power. Because it knows what you need. So you hear it, but do you listen to it? Because we often hear it, but we don't listen to it. Because someone else knows better. That can't be right. It requires change. There's so many reasons why we don't listen to ourselves. So I'm challenging you to listen. What are you being told right now? What are you being told you need? What are you being told is missing? What are you being told you need less of, more of? What do you need to let go of? All of this is about moving into our feminine energy and finding that balance within. And that's going to be different for everyone. We don't have a one size fits all. So what works for you may not work for someone else. And that's one of the reasons I love collective um, projects like a summit and why I do so many collaborations in my own business because we all need something different. And just because this works amazing for me doesn't mean it's going to work amazing for you. And so these collective summits like this allow you to experience similar ideas from different people in different ways to find what fits for you. And then you still have to take it and put your own energy, your own spin on it to know what works best for you. And that requires trusting yourself. So building your intuition that feminine energy within, your creativity, your intuition, your rest and self-care, key components of feminine energy. All of that feeds into finding your balance. So what are you doing to find your balance? So after you have created your piece and take as long as you need to do that, it may be done. It may need days. You'll come back to it tomorrow and you're like, oh, wait, you may see something in it in another day. You may need to sleep on what came to you because you don't really understand it. Be kind to yourself. Allow yourself the space to learn. Learn to trust yourself, right? And so I would suggest when you're done your painting or drawing or um, sketch or, you know, scribble, whatever it is for you, um, maybe it's gardening. Maybe you've been planting plants in a, in a certain way. Whatever it is for you, I would suggest once it's complete to do some journaling. 
How did it feel to do this? What messages came up for you? What do you need to move forward? And allow those answers to come to you and fill your page. One of the questions I always ask after we do a creative project is how how did that make me feel, right? How did that make me feel? And most of my community knows that. If we're going to do a creative project, we're also going to tap into what's going on underneath. Because creativity is such a great way to express. And so it's one of the things I use because it's a gentle way to express. It can be um, angry and all of those things. But getting angry at a canvas or a art journal is still a safer bet for yourself if you're learning to be angry. And as women, we have every right to be angry about so many things. But if we can learn to express in our creativity, it really does open up a lot of uh, tapping into our own self. So I'm going to challenge you after you're done creating is then to ask those journaling questions or ask those questions in your journal and and go even further. So I just want to thank uh, Marina again for having me. And uh, you will have my links and everything to find me at creativeyou.ca. Our awakening program is um, closed at the moment, but we will be offering it again. It's about stepping into your own feminine uh, energy, your most authentic self. Uh, it's an amazing program. Uh, we do have lots of different programs from meditation and journaling to uh, summits to lots of different creative aspects. We just we have so many things going on uh, because it's so important to us that uh, everyone have access. So different price points, different uh, time zone, like all of the things so that everybody can have access to something at some time. So we'll hopefully we'll see you at Creative View. .ca. So that's creative, the letter U, .ca, because I may be in Canada, but we are global. So I hope to see you there. Bye for now.